Um, my name is Holly Dix Lawrence and I'm the head of history at Morrison Comprehensive School. The whole school has embraced a star marking policy um, which we started last year and the children are quite well versed in how star marking um, takes place in the classroom. So we will set them success criteria, they'll create their assessment, we'll mark it, um, we'll comment on their strengths, um, specifically then targets to improve accuracy in terms of their written English and then give them time to reflect and that time needs to be at least I would say 20 minutes to 30 minutes to see a proper improvement. Um, it has worked well because they are more conscious of what they write, they're really eager to improve their work, they understand how to improve their work and I suppose it has actually had an impact on improving levels at Key Stage 3 but it was becoming quite a laborious task mm. for staff. So one way in which I've tried to help my department um, with their workload is to anticipate the types of strengths that you're going to see in a piece of pupil work, the types of targets that you would expect children to get because we were finding that we were writing similar things repeatedly. It was taking a very long time. So I created star sheets which already had the comments on them and then all the staff member has to do is to highlight the relevant comments for the child but of course they mark their spelling, punctuation and grammar and we found that that's helped the children and it's helped the staff. I think because there's consistency now across targets, um, they can clearly see what it is and we try to make sure that the targets are written as a question because they find answering a question is easier than maybe just interpreting a statement and trying to improve on a statement which is more difficult I would say. Specifically in history we, we do peer assessment but more so with um, assessments, big assessments, it is teacher marked and they improve their target and I think what we try to do with the targets to make sure that they improve and see why they've got to improve is link it specifically to the success criteria. So if they check back at that, they can see a link, right, okay, this is why she's given me that target. I was supposed to do that, I haven't do that, I've done it now, hopefully I can hit this next level. So we've always used success criteria in history, but this year what I tried to do was try to make sure that the approach was completely consistent for the assessment set at seven, eight and nine each term or each half term. So I type up the success criteria, we put it on the board, we talk through it so every pupil in the class knows exactly what needs to take place in the assessment and every member of the department has the same success criteria, so we're the same across the board. And by talking them through it, they should then hopefully understand exactly what's expected of them so nobody can misinterpret what has to be done in the assessment. And that hopefully avoids too, too many of the same mistakes happening. Um, mainly more at higher levels, I'd say, we use models. Sometimes what a good one looks like, but sometimes using one that maybe isn't perfect and trying to get them to see why it isn't perfect and how they would improve that, which sometimes is, is more beneficial because it can be a bit off-putting giving somebody an A type piece of work and they think I'm never going to be able to achieve that. So it's sometimes better working from a place of imperfection. I think the kids are more motivated to do well because they know the process and it's not just a process in history, it's a process in every subject area. So they know they're going to have an, an assessment, they know they're going to have success criteria, they know the process, so it's success criteria, assessment, marked, go through your star marking and they're really keen to do well because they know this is an assessment, this is going to be a level piece of work, I want to do my best. And because they're given the opportunity to improve on it, they want to try to make sure they can increase their level further. So I think it's had an impact on their attitude to it. They take it maybe take it more seriously. I think we're probably more conscious of looking at progress and how they're learning rather than just offloading knowledge. Um, having said that, in history, children love a story. Mm -hmm. They love learning the true story that is history. And I think to a certain extent, it's taken away a little bit of that because we have to spend a great deal of time doing assessments and reflecting on them because to reflect and to improve your work it has to be meaningful and therefore time has to be spent. Um, so there are pros and cons. Um, it, it's, it's not a particularly fun lesson for the children but it's an important lesson they have got they have got something out of it. 
I think maybe a taking this into A level might be more beneficial. Um, we do a huge amount of um, marking at A level and essay writing specifically in my unit of the course. Um, and I, we do see children repeating the same kind of mistakes. Um, and you know, sometimes you're reluctant to treat the older children like the younger children, but I think maybe using the clear success criteria that we've used with the lower school, with these very kind of strict structures, will help them achieve better grades because some of the things at A-level are particularly challenging and just giving them the assessment criteria that examiners use is a bit too woolly for them. So I think maybe we, we might go into that direction because it's we've practiced it hard at Key 3 we know what we're doing so maybe use it at A-level possibly could be beneficial.